I'm here representing the Anglican Communion, but also especially representing the Archbishop of Canterbury. And so I brought his prayers and greetings. I asked that the Synod might be praying for him as well, because we have a very important meeting of the primates coming up in January. The other thing I went on to say really was that uh, listening to many of the interventions, I felt that often it, it seemed as if that they were talking about a moment in time, that the family was almost a unit or a, an event that happened on a particular moment. So I was talking about the fact that families change all the time and that we all change all the time. And so I was going on to suggest that actually as Christians we ought to embrace change because we are those who are converted to Christ every single day of our lives. And I think if we have that opening, open aspect, then we can be more hopeful about the future and also in our engagement with the families as they're changing all the time. Well, there are some good moments and some difficult moments. So I've had some moments where I've sat in admiration of all that's happening around me and I've had some moments where I've sat wondering uh, what's going on around me. So I think that this is exactly a process that everybody is learning about. And as in our small group we were saying this morning actually that you know some people are very nervous because they expect somebody to tell them what to do and to uh, be very clear. Other people are delighted that there is a space. I think it will take much longer than these three weeks for this process to become a natural and normal part of the life of the ongoing life of the Roman Catholic Church. Um, not surprisingly, one of the bits of Bible that has been talked around a huge amount in this synod is the time when Jesus uh, had the lady who was caught in adultery and there was writing in the gra ground and go and sin no more. Um, I do think that I'm always surprised why it can sometimes he people hear us suggesting that sexual sins are more important than other sins. It seems to me that in any pastoral encounter you have to attend to the person in front of you and you have to value them as a person made in the image of God. And if we don't do that, if we don't give, not just me, but if the Roman Catholic Church, dare I say it, don't give that message loud and strongly, as I think Pope Francis is always wanting us to do, uh, in our pastoral encounters to care for the other person, notice the other person, then I'm afraid that families will just ignore the church and imagine there's nothing that we have to say to them. It's a great privilege and I'm delighted I've been invited. I take it very seriously and I hope I've not ruined everything by being here myself. But more seriously, I think, yes, we're on a very long journey ourselves. I think, again, as I said about pastoral encounters, we need to attend to each other. And the more I can come and other representatives come and the other way around, that we invite representatives from the Roman Catholic Church to take part in dialogue, then we understand each other. And you actually have to understand each other from the inside, as it were. You have to understand each other's cultures as well as the words that you use. The danger of documents is that they can be missed misunderstood and misinterpreted so easily. So I think journeying with you and praying alongside you is the crucial bit of what we're doing here.